S&P 500 notching its 31st record close of the year today. Our next guest sees more fuel left in the tank, raising his year-end price target to 6,000 for the index. That's the highest number on the street now. We finished today at 5487, as you can see right there on your screen. Joining us now, Evercore ISI Senior Managing Director Julian Emanuel. Julian, it's great to have you back on the show. You didn't just raise your your target to a street high of 6,000. You raised it from 4750. What what is going into this new target? Why are you doing it now? And why are you feeling so bullish for the end of the year? So, so thank you, Morgan. We're going to rewind a little bit of, of stuff here, going back to your last guest and some of the commentary. Uh, the first thing is, when you think about the risk of the market now, there's two things you want to look for. Is there a bubble forming? And is there the potential for a recession? And frankly, when we look around, A, the fact that there's all this talk around a potential bubble and a lot of controversy around that gives us comfort that we're actually nowhere near a bubble. And when we think of all the, the traditional signs of a bubble, IPOs, M&A frenzy, uh, you know, huge public bullishness, potential policy errors, we're very comforted by the fact that there's more to go. Uh, and in terms of the recession part, uh, we just, the, the economy is slowing, absolutely, everyone knows it. It's not at all, uh, the, from what we see, in danger of the imminent downturn. And, and in fact, the Fed is likely going to be behind us if we need it. So hmm. we put that all together and we come to this idea that, look, our skepticism about valuation over the long course of history is pretty well founded, which is why we sort of were resistant uh, to get more positive. But then we dug in and we thought about the AI stocks, which we've been proponents of for well over a year. And we came to the conclusion that expensive markets happen every now and then. And when they do, they last longer and go further than anyone thinks. This expensive market is six months old and 12 percent higher. The averages go significantly higher from there. Okay. That's how we get to 6,000. All right. So that's that's interesting. Now, we do have economic data that's softening. Look no further than retail sales as the latest example of that this morning. To your point, you do have a market that is looking expensive from a valuation standpoint, you also have a market where breadth has been very narrow. We know it's really the small handful of mega cap tech stocks that are leading the charge right now. So what does it take to see that broaden out? Does it need to broaden out to keep trading at higher levels? So we would certainly be more comfortable if it did, in fact, broaden out. If you look at the past, it doesn't necessarily have to be the case that it broadens out. We actually think that it does broaden out. Actually, that 2020 to 2021 example that Mike Santoli talked about a few moments ago is a perfect example. You had a pullback in technology, and then you had leadership uh, assumed in, in small caps. We actually think that coming into the Russell 2000 uh, rebalance at the end of June, that you could have a reassertion of that leadership. Uh, frankly, from a valuation standpoint, you're at extremes, so we would not be surprised at all to see a bit more leadership rotation. And as I said, that would be a good thing. Julian, here's the part of all of this that makes me most uncomfortable from an investor standpoint. What about the fact that the mega caps are so out of step with stocks in general, just doing so much better, and then stocks in general are so out of step with how Main Street consumers are feeling, given what's happening uh, with inflation, you know, particularly the folks who are mostly living paycheck to paycheck. Something has to, to come into step at some point. And is it more likely that the Main Street consumer starts feeling like NVIDIA or that the broader market starts feeling like the Main Street consumer? John, I don't think anyone's going to feel like an Inv NVIDIA. <laughs> it, is a, it is a thing unto itself uh, for the most part. Uh, and actually, our fundamental analyst thinks you could get to a sort of 10 to 15 percent weighting the S&P 500 over the next, call it five years or so. But what I would say there is, remember, part of the reason that the consumer has felt so depressed, I guess, is probably the way to call it, is this sort of anchoring on inflation as a function of what prices were in 2019, forgetting about how their income has moved 
And obviously, this is uh, feeding into, you know, sort of huh. uncertainty coming to the election. We think that over the course of the rest of the year, it will become clearer that inflation is continuing to moderate. OK. And and the economy is not likely to hard land until, you know, call it late late this year, early next year. And we think any hard landing will actually be mitigated by the Fed to a very large extent.